here with Brother Villa here in uh, Brownsville. Uh, he, I, another brother I just ran into, and he says that he watches Baba TV all the time. I appreciate you for tuning in, brother. I really do. Check out Baba TV. Peace, y'all. Definitely check out the fam. Check out the information. Get your knowledge on, man, and build, build, build or destroy. Yes, sir. Peace to Baba. Friday over here with Baba and Big Brother Seville over here doing it. Seville, uh, talk to the people, brother. What's been going on? You out here working with the people? Well, you know, as I'm, always. I've been out here, man, uh, maintaining, man, uh, stability, man, and activating knowledge and uh, spreading it, man, to the people, man. I'm out here on the streets teaching, man. You know what I'm saying? What I constantly have to do is, is in my nature. I'm forced to teach and raise the dead. I'm forced to wake people up who don't have information. I have to teach in order for me to get my blessings. And this is what I'm doing in Brownsville, teaching the babies, teaching the families, and teaching people, man, who actually uh, want to learn and, and want to know why they in the condition they're in and how they can reverse that cycle and become wise and civilized. Talk to me a little bit about what's the baseball player that committed suicide. I think he just was like, Shh. you know, when I because they said if if he got off, if he got off some kind of way that he could still his family could get the what is, I think it was five million, five million, five million dollars. I don't think nobody killed him. I think he just checked out of here. Well, I think that uh, well, his lawyer said that he didn't think that he would kill himself because he had appeals that was uh, in effect where he might could get around the stuff that he did. So they saying it was it was it was very unlikely that he would kill himself because they might he might have been getting ready to get out. You know, a lot of people be convicted for murder, man. Had money in the past and have did stuff and got out of it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you know, I mean, it could go either way, man. Some saying that, that he killed himself, and some saying that, you know what I'm saying, that he would have never did it. So we never will know about it, man, because he's gone now, man. Right. And some would say, well, why should we care anyway? He did. I, I mean, he killed somebody, so he was convicted of murder. So why should we care anyway whether he killed himself or not? That's a fact, brother. I mean, at the end of the day, um, he forgot who he was. He forgot, man, that he had people watching him. He forgot that, you know what I'm saying, that he had to hold uh, certain things down, man. For people to look at him, he had to accept the example. So he, you can't just do what you want to do when you're in the eyesight of society. And he was a great, you know, he was a good football player, man. But he, certain behaviors that he's supposed to have changed, he didn't change. And they were still in him. And that's what got him in jail in the first place, man. So you, you look like he'll go off on somebody in a minute. 
Yeah, he looked like he was the savage man on the down low. You know what I'm saying? He was just playing a he was just playing a part and the part that he was playing, you know what I'm saying, you know, caught up with him. Because the same people that he was dealing with, man, before he became a football player who were doing negative things, you know what I'm saying? Um, it came to pass, man. Uh, his activity and things he was doing, man. And that's the kind of uh, person he really was, a violent person who really didn't really care or understand the status that he had maintained for himself, man. So at the end of the day, brother, I think he got what he deserved. Mm. Over here a little bit closer. See, Brother Seville has, I want a couple of these. Take back to my nephews and nieces. Brother Seville selling turtles. Brother Seville always got, how much these go for, Seville? $10. Oh, that's good. It's already got the pen form and everything. Everything's ready to go. Pack the man. Yeah, got the little handles. Handles on it. Yeah. That's good to have a little pet. All right. It's on you, Seville. Whatever you might want to do. I think that um, at the end of the day, man, that we out here in Brownsville, man, and I think that everybody must realize and understand, man, that we have to change certain mentalities about how we conduct our lives. I have a book getting ready to come out on the, on the, on the black family. Um, and what I'm discussing in the book is how black people got to change the way they view life, the way they look at life, and the, the way they actually live their lives. Because the family is the foundation to everything that we have. And we don't have a family, we have nothing. We can't go anywhere, we can't do anything. You know what I'm saying, without that family. You know what I'm saying, if that father and mother's not in the house doing the thing they're supposed to do, how can we go anywhere, man? How can we do anything? If we don't know, understand the significance of the father and the significance of the mother, the significance of the aunt, the significance of the uncle, the significance of the cousin, you know what I'm saying? We have families turning on families. We are all for money. You know what I'm saying? Let a family member get $50,000 man, and hit lotto. A lot of them turn their back on their own sisters and brothers. This is the mentality. Remember, they have became civilized people and now they're uncivilized. You know what I'm saying? They're acting like savages. They're acting like the same man that has them, you know what I'm saying, on their plantation. The mentality has not changed about how they feel about themselves. They disrespect their mother. They disrespect their father. There's no respect in the household. You know what I'm saying? These grandmothers and grandfathers are not doing what they're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Backing their children up, man. You know what I'm saying? Disciplining them children, man. Look, look at where we at, man. We in Brownsville, one of the worst parts in America, man. Well, all you hear is gunfire. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and people running around rampant, doing all kind of stuff, dealing with self-hatred, man, all day long. Until you live it and been through it, then you ain't going to understand the concept of being an alcoholic or being on crack or sniffing cocaine or doing things of this nature, man, that makes you lower and beneath the people that you that you supposed to be uh, setting an example for. At the end of the day, we have to come out of this state of mind. We have to come out of this state of mind and see the light because at the end of the day, we're not gonna never be able to go anywhere and we don't realize and understand who we are and how important it is for us to maintain a certain a certain stability in a certain state of mind. My brother, come over here. This is my partner here. Introduce yourself, man, and give them an insight, man, of what you think need to be done in the black community to change the state of mind that we're in. Peace. My name is Shabazz. The state of mind of the black community, you know, has to be changed with the proper direction. We need the proper knowledge of self. We need to understand our true culture, and we need to understand where we're at and who the enemy is, and why he has a such and a damaged psychological state, broken homes, homelessness, and the hospitals and institutions. We need to come together as a people and unite and learn to love ourselves and to love our parents and to love our children and think. We need to come together and think and realize, look, this, this is ridiculous. We got to stop this. We got to stop this ignorance and we got to stop killing ourselves and stop using drugs and alcohol. 
we have to understand that this is a savage culture, the American culture. They call it the American dream. It's not the American dream anymore. It's the American nightmare because of what's happening to black people. We need to unite and come together and stop this foolishness and realize we've been free only 150 years after being in captivity for 500 years. And now they're still shooting us down the street and we're shooting each other down the street. We need love of self. We need knowledge of self. We need to know that we're from the motherland, right? And we need to go back to that culture of the motherland where it took a village to raise a child. Mm. Now we got babies raising babies and they, they too young to even know anything about a baby because they're babies. So this madness has to stop. We need knowledge of self. We need guys. We need to understand our culture. We need to understand what Michael Mex was talking about. We need to understand these things. We need to understand that we have to stop being so violent. Our women have to stop cursing in front of their children and stop smoking in front of their children. You understand? This, this, this madness, this, this madness that's going on in the black community, you know? That's why every time I see a black woman or a black man that I stop, I let them, I always ask them, do you know your true culture? Because if you know your true culture, you know how to behave in your community. You know that you have to protect the black man and the black child and especially the black woman because if it wasn't for the black woman, would nobody be on this planet? We have to stop and think. We have to think before we react. You understand? Because if we react negative, that's what the police and the devils want us to do. They will take us out. Let me ask you, brother, here a question. What do you think about the state of black America, man, or the state of Brownsville itself? Do you think we're going up, we're coming down? Uh, are we ever going to come out of this madness that we're in? Well, I think I think we go, we're going to come out of it, you know. We've got to have a lot of corroboration, you know. you just got to have a lot of corroboration. Knowledge is key. Understanding. Non-cooning. Supporting black business. All right. Uh, you see the brother said you just non-cooning and support black business. You know, at the end of the day, man, we have to understand, man, that we are in, uh, in a situation unless we come together as one. And we, unless we come together as one hold, we can't go anywhere, man. There's nothing really going to happen with us. You know what I'm saying? Unless we stop the, 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 the nonsense that we can't sit down if you're a Christian. And you can't sit down if you're a Muslim. I can't sit down if you, you know what I'm saying, a, a, a Buddha. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you believe in Hindu. Whatever it may be, we have to stop thinking that we, got, we, we can't sit down. Because we got to sit down. With a roster firm. See, I got a roster firm and watch on. You oh, know what I'm saying? It's a lot man. Oh, that's the new joints? Yeah, this the new joints, man. Matter of fact, I'm going to get this a Bible. Come in, my brother. This is this is a brother that I grew up with in Brownsville, man, from a young man, man. Tell me your experience, man, living in, in, in Brownsville. Oh, man. Um, coming up was, well, it was fun for us, but now it's different. Things have changed. Kind of like. The game has changed. These, these young people don't want to do nothing. They want to get out here and just think they could just get it. But nobody's just going to give it to you. But this is a good brother. He's seen me grow up. I've seen him grow up. You got to try to stick together as much as possible. That's all I can say, you know? All right. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, man, you know, uh, we all have to recognize, man, that in order for us to make it, we got to all sit down, man, and come together, man. And I constantly got to say this because our people, man, think that they can make it without unity. There's, there's, there's nobody going to go anywhere with all the bickering and argument that's going on in the, in the so-called conscious community right now, man. There's always bickering and arguing. How about some solutions, man? How about how to work through problems, man? You know what I'm saying? Later for all the chaos and confusion, has always been chaos and confusion in the black race. Always. You know what I'm saying? Now, people are supposed to have information. It's supposed to change your state of mind. You, you can't continue to be an asshole once you got some knowledge of self because that's the foundation of everything, man. Knowledge should stop you from doing stupid shit that you was doing before you had that knowledge. It should change some characteristics about you as an individual, man. You can't be still sniffing cocaine once you done woke up and realize that cocaine is killing you. You can't continue to drink alcohol every day and become an alcohol and, and, and you know and understand that that's killing you. You can't continue to do a lot of stuff. 
that you're doing to yourself, you know what I'm saying, once you have that information, man. What about alcohol? Because people don't think that's a drug. Man, and let me tell you something. It's a powerful drug, they man. tell me the withdrawal from it can kill you. Let me tell you something, man. That the, the DTs and 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 uh, that that illness, man, that um makes you. I mean, it just it it finishes your blood first of all. Alcohol, it finishes the blood. You know what I'm saying? It breaks down your kidneys, your liver, your lungs. You know what I'm saying? Everything it finishes your blood, man. It makes you weak. You feel what I'm saying? You where you can't really activate anything, and it's legal. And they worried about all these other drugs, man, going on, man. You got a liquor store, man, that at least the majority of the individuals in Browns will drink. So I'm saying, man, maybe there's a, a, a million people out here. A million people, man. And I'm telling you, man, that 99.9 .9 of them individuals drink alcohol or on something to try to get away from the pain and the misery that they are in. See, people use drugs, man, to escape reality, man. That's all it's for. You know what I'm saying? To stop thinking about the pain or stop thinking about them being molested or stop thinking about, man, them not getting the proper love and affection that they need in that household. You know what I'm saying? So they go get it from a stranger. They go get it from somebody else, man. That's what's going on in the black community. We are dealing with a lot of pain and a lot of confusion. And at the end of the day, we got to come together, man. You know what I'm saying? And stop the bullshit, man. All over the place, man. I mean, bomb here, a bomb here, a bomb here. But what we got to understand is that we have to stop dropping the bombs on ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And wake up and realize, man, that the world don't care nothing about black people, man. Everybody else is doing for themselves, man. The Chinese, you know what I'm saying, they're doing for themselves. The Koreans, the only people that are not doing for themselves are black people, man, at the end of the day, man. And we got to wake up, man, and realize that, man. Ain't nobody going to give us nothing, man. Ain't nobody going to give us nothing, man. We got to do everything in our power to maintain our own existence, man. That's why I'm out here on the street doing what I do, man, getting my money, man, taking care of my family, man, and taking care of the babies that are fortunate as other people and giving them some, some, some money or looking out for them, come bringing food and putting food in their house. I do that. With my own personal money, man. People are starving and they got enough pampers for the kids. I go to the house and deliver and take pampers to them. Take food to them, man. That's what I do in my community, man. It ain't all about flame and glory. I didn't been there, done that. You know what I'm saying? A long time ago, man. It's about showing and proving in this day and time, man. You got to activate. Come over here, brother. You know, I got I, I got these brothers hanging around me, man. I got to get some, some, some black power from somewhere. What do you think about the state of mind of uh, of black America right now, man. Just give me a little insight. We we lost, man. We need that unity, but you know we struggling. We man, we we ain't got our history. We ain't got our culture. You know, we've been stripped of our you know everything. So we. Our state, you know, it's a depressed state. You know, we we struggling. We need we need help. We need we need knowledge of ourselves. You know, so right now we lost. You know, it's like we wandering through the wilderness. You know, so that's where we at right now in this day and time. So, do you think that it is any help for us? Well, there's always there's always potential. You know, what I'm saying. Look at Malcolm X, you know, he was Detroit Red, you know what I'm saying? Like, the bottom of the bottom, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, there's always that potential to go from, like, a Detroit Red to El Hodge, El Malik, El Shabazz, you know? So, there's always that potential, you know? So, but that's where we at. That's our state right now, you know? We the oppressed, you know? We the wretched of the earth, you know? So, but yeah, there's always hope. We need to organize. We need to build with our brothers, build our brothers and sisters up, and not, you know, not look down upon one each one another because, um, you know, we've all been at that state. You know, those of us who've gotten a little knowledge have to pass that knowledge on. You know, each one teach one, and we just build, build from there. All right. Um, this is a. I should cover my book. That should be out, man, sometime in July or the uh, the beginning of August on the Black Family. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
I put a lot of research and a lot of work into this book. You know what I'm saying? To show and prove, man, what happened to the black family and what we have to do to reinvest in the black family, bring it back to life. Because in order for us to go anywhere, man, um, the black family have to be raised out of the state of mind that it's in. And uh, that's my baby, man. That's what I do, man. You know? I can't do anything else, man, other than that, man, right now, man. Um, but teach, you know what I'm saying, and, and try to raise uh, uh, more students up. Uh, 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 my newest student is supposed to come out here, you know what I'm saying, I don't know where she's at. But I guess, you know what I'm saying, she got caught She got caught in the train or in the traffic, man. But I have a couple of new students, man, that I'm teaching, man, and that I'm raising up, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like Marcus. Uh, Marcus is on vacation right now, you know what I'm saying, doing what Marcus do. But I guess uh, soon, I mean, sooner or later he'll come back and surface. No, that doesn't mean he's locked up. No, he's not locked up. No, he's not locked up. No, he's, uh, he's doing some intense studying. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. People would think that you know what I'm saying. He, you know, he's not locked up. He's just doing a lot of intense studying. He's doing a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and sharpening his craft up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he has a couple of little students following him around now too. So yeah, he's all right, man. You know what I'm saying? Since Isis is another one who uh, who who is around me a lot, and she's actually teaching. She's actually doing what she needs to do. I mean. Uh, I was trying to raise some sisters up and get them some information, man, so they can raise some more sisters up. So it's about each one teach one at the end of the day, man. That's what it's all about.